Reflections on the Gospel of Today, 19th of August, Friday, 20th week in Ordinary Time. The Gospel text is Matthew 22, 34 to 40. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together and to disconcert him, one of them put a question, Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second resembles it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also. The scribes and the Pharisees emphasized the observing of the law in order to be saved. But an ordinary Jew may get lost in the innumerable different observances, so they wanted to know which of them was the greatest, most central to the law. Jesus gives two. The greatest is love of God, the second is love of neighbor, which resembles the first. Then Jesus added, on these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets too. According to Jesus, love is central to the whole scripture. The whole scripture reveals God's love for God's people and therefore the obligation from the part of the people to love God in return, which includes love of neighbor. By putting these two commandments side by side, Jesus gives them both equal importance. In another place, Jesus would put love of neighbor as the summary of the whole scripture. So always treat others as you would like them to treat you. This is the law and the prophets. In the Gospel of John, Loving one another as I have loved you becomes the only commandment, his new commandment, which replaces the whole law. Later on, Paul would say that if you love your neighbor as yourself, you have kept the whole law, because all the commandments are summary of the one commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. So, to the question of the scribe, which is the greatest commandment of the law, the final answer would be, love one another as I have loved you. It includes the love of God as the foundation and source of the love of God. Sorry. It includes the love of God as the foundation and source of love for others. In the New Testament, the love of God and love of neighbor are intimately connected. They are two sides of the same coin. John, in the Gospel and letters, explains it very well. Whoever says, I know him or love him without keeping his commandments is a liar and truth has no place in him. But anyone who keeps his word, that is, the commandment of love, in such a one, God's love truly reaches its perfection. This is 1 John 2, 4-5. When we believe in God's love for us, manifested on the cross, that love remains in us. 
and our love for others is a perfectioning of God's love in us. If we do not love others, that means God love, God's love in us is unproductive. Ordinarily, God's love in us must produce fruit in love of neighbor. If it does not, our faith is not complete. We could even say it is dead. First John repeats this idea again in chapter 4. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love each other, God remains in us and His love comes to its perfection in us. 4.12 Again, First John, everyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. Whoever fails to love does not know God because God is love. 4, 7 to 8. Our love for others is an outward expression of presence of God in us who is love. If love of others is lacking, it shows that God who is love is not in that person. He or she does not love God or does not know God, is not a child of God. I love God. This is an interior reality. It can be seen outwardly only when I love others concretely, not just in words. Again, First John says, if one is well off in worldly possessions, and sees his brother in need, but closes his heart to him. How can the love of God be remaining in him? This is 3.17. These words of First John echoes very clearly the words of Jesus. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. John 15.13. To be able to keep his commandment of love, what is necessary is to remain in his love. When we remain in his love, then we can keep his commandment of love. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. John 15, 9. And we remain in Jesus' love in prayer. So we pray, Jesus, to be able to love like you, we must remain in your love. Contemplate your love in prayer. To let you love us in prayer and see your love everywhere, in all situations of our life. For this we need new eyes, eyes of faith. May we see your love in all things and events and love you in return by loving others as you loved us. Amen. I am Father George Uken of the Society of Jesus of the Jesuits.